Welcome to edupediaworld.com. I am Somja J. Nair, your online tutor for Plus 2 Zoology. In this video, I am going to talk about human reproduction. Reproductive events in humans. Humans are sexually reproducing and viviparous in nature. The reproductive events in humans include formation of gametes, that is called gametogenesis in which sperms in males and ovums in females are produced. Then transfer of sperms into female genital tract called insemination. Then fusion of male and female gametes called fertilization. This fertilization leads to the formation of zygote and this zygote will develop to blastocyst and this blastocyst will go and attach on the uterine wall called implantation. Then the embryonic developmental stage called gestational period and then the delivery of the baby called paturation. The male reproductive system. The male reproductive system is located in the pelvis region. It includes a pair of testes along with the accessory dates, glands and external genitalia. The testes are situated outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called scrotum. The scrotum helps in maintaining the low temperature of the testes 2 to 2.5 degrees celsius lower than normal internal body temperature necessary for spermatogenesis in adults each testis is oval in shape with a length of about 4 to 5 cm and a width of about 2 to 3 cm the testis is covered by a dense covering each testis has about 250 compartments called testicular lobules each lobule contains one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules in which sperms are produced. Each seminiferous tubule is lined on its inside by two types of cells called male germ cells and Sertoli cells. The male germ cells are otherwise called spermatogonia. The male germ cells undergo meiotic division finally leading to sperm formation while Sertoli cells provide nutrition to the germ cells. The region outside the seminiferous tubules called interstitial spaces. It contains small blood vessels and interstitial cells or Leydig cells. Leydig cells synthesize and secrete testicular hormone called androgens. Other immunologically competent cells are also present here. The male accessory ducts include rete testis, vasa effentia, epididemis and vasa deferens. The seminiferous tubules of the testes open into the vasa effentia through rete testes. The vasa effentia leave the testes and open into epididymis located along the posterior surface of the each testes. The epididymis lead to vasa deferens that accents to the abdomen and loops over the urinary bladder. It receives a duct from seminal vesicle and opens into urethra as the ejaculatory duct. These ducts store and transport the sperms from the testes to the outside through urethra. The urethra originates from the urinary bladder and extends through the penis to its external opening called urethral meters. This is the pictorial representation of the male reproductive system. Here you can see the seminal vesicle, the prostate gland, bulbourethral gland, urethra, testis, the foreskin of the penis, glands, penis, testicular lobules inside the testis. This is the uh, accessory dead so for the testis. They are vasa deferens, epididemis, vasa effentia, rete testis. You can see here the seminiferous tubules of the testis and open it into the epididemis which is located in the posterior surface of the each testis. The epididymis leads to vasa deferens that accent to abdomen and loops over the urinary bladder. It receives a duct from seminal vesicle and opens into urethra as the ejaculate duct. This duct store and transport the sperm from testis to the outside through urethra. Here you can see that. The urethra originates from the urinary bladder here and it extends to the penis to this external opening called urethra meters here. So through the urethra the sperm come out. 
male external genitalia the penis is the male external genitalia it is made of special tissue that helps in erection of the penis to facilitate the insemination the enlarged end of the penis called gland penis is covered by a loose fold of skin called foreskin the male accessory glands include paired seminal vesicles a prostate and a paired bulbourethral glands secretion of these glands constitute the seminal plasma which is rich in fructose calcium and certain enzymes the secretion of bulbourethral glands also helps in the lubrication of the penis the female reproductive system this is a diagrammatic sectional view of female reproductive system the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries along with a pair of oviducts uterus cervix vagina and the external genitalia located in the pelvic region these parts of the system along with a pair of mammary glands are integrated structurally and functionally to support the process of ovulation fertilization pregnancy birth and child care ovaries what are ovaries ovaries are the primary female sex organs that produce the female gamete called ovum and several steroid hormones called ovarian hormones the ovaries are located one on each side of the lower abdomen each ovary is about 2 to 4 cm in length and is connected to the pelvic wall and uterus by ligaments each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium which encloses the ovarian stroma the stroma is divided into two zones a peripheral cortex and an inner medulla the oviduct or called fallopian tubules uterus and vagina constitute the female accessory ducts each fallopian tubule is about 10 to 12 cm long and extends from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus the part closer to the ovary is funnel shaped infundibulum the edges of the infundibulum possess finger like projections called fimbriae which help in the collection of ovum after ovulation the infundibulum leads to a wider part of oviduct called ampulla the last part of the oviduct is called isthmus has a narrow lumen and it joins to the uterus uterus the uterus is single and it is also called womb the shape of the uterus is like an inverted pear it is supported by ligaments attached to the pelvic wall the uterus opens into the vagina through a narrow cervix the cavity of the cervix is called the cervical canal which along with the vagina forms the birth canal during the delivery the wall of the uterus has three layers of tissue the external thin membranous layer is called perimetrium the middle thick layer of smooth muscles called myometrium and inner glandular layer called endometrium that lines the uterine cavity the endometrium undergoes cyclical changes during menstrual cycle while the myometrium exhibits strong contractions during the delivery of baby the female external genitalia the female external genitalia include monus pubis labia majora labia minora hymen and clitoris monus pubis it is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair then labia majora there are fleshy fold of tissues which extended down from the monus pubis and surrounded the vaginal opening labia minora there are paired folds of tissues under the labia majora the opening of the vagina is often covered partially by a membrane called hymen the clitoris is a tiny finger like structure which lies at the upper junction of two labia minora above the urethral opening the hymen is often torn during the first coitus that is intercourse however it can also be broken by sudden fall or jolt insertion of a vaginal tampon activate participation in some sports like horseback riding cycling etc in some women the hymen persists even after coitus in fact 
the presence or absence of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity or sexual experience mammary glands a functional mammary gland is characteristic of all female mammals the mammary glands are paired structures called breasts that contain glandular tissues and variable amount of fat the glandular tissue of each breast is divided into 50 to 20 mammary lobes containing clusters of cells called alveoli the alveoli open into mammary tubules the tubules of each lobe join to form a mammary duct several mammary ducts join to form a wider mammary ampulla which is connected to lactiferous ducts through which milk is sucked out thank you